Here I'll show you how to do a sensitivity analysis in Excel. It's going to allow you to view a list of results, a list of outputs, based off of a changing series of inputs, effectively allowing, allowing you to stress test or determine the sensitivity of your numbers, how much they're going to change when you change their inputs. In Excel, this is called a data table, not a terrifically helpful or descriptive name, but it's a really powerful feature. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. Here we'll work on two different data sets, and the first one is a super, super simple data set with only three things going on. We have price, quantity, and total. So simple number here, five, another number 20, and then just a tiny little formula that multiplies the two together. So I want to make it as simple as possible because your data up here can get as complex as it needs to be. That is irrelevant because you're going to set it up the exact same way for the data table. So let's go ahead and make what's called a one variable data table. That means that we're going to change one input and then view the result of those changes. And in order for this to work and any data table to work, you need to have data where you have inputs, like price and quantity, they are inputs, and a cell that utilizes those inputs. So this cell must use whatever cell we would like to change up here. Because, well, just think about it. If total down here is hard-coded and it doesn't use these cells up here, changing these cells will never change the total. So they must always talk to one another, or this must always use the inputs. Okay, so now let's go with how you set it up. It's a very specific format. We need to make two columns. I'm going to give them titles. You do not have to give them titles, but you will very quickly see how important it is to do that. So we have quantity and we have total. Now what I want to do is I want to change the quantity over here and see the resulting change in total over here. Now the first row under these headers is reserved. So it's reserved to be over here. I'm just going to write the word original. It's going to be the original value and you'll understand what that means in a moment. And over here what you want to do is you want to link it to the cell that has the result which we would like to be viewing. I want to view the total result, so I link it to that cell. Now, in some examples, you will see where what they do over here, where I typed original, is they simply just put 20. So I have 20 up here, I just put 20 down there. You do not need to do that. I don't particularly like that format because you don't always want this guy up here to be the bottom of what you're going to be stress testing. So now, over here, this is where you put your increments. So I want to test for quantity of 1, quantity of 5, 10, 15, and 20. So this is the basic one variable setup. You have a column of values that you're going to change. These are the inputs you're going to use, you're going to be changing. Leave the top one at original, easy peasy, and right here the formula that we want to use to see the result. So basically, the result that you want to see. Maybe I made that sound a little confusing. The result you want to see right here. And link it to your data set. Now all you do is to select these dudes like this. Oops, select them. Go to the data tab, what if analysis, data table, and over here, this is an easy one to forget. You only have two inputs, but which one is it? Is it a row input or a column input? Just think about it like this. Right now we're going up and down. That's a column. So column input cell. Now this is the value to change. This is what we want to change to affect the total. So we want to change the quantity. So we select the quantity cell up here. Because what Excel is going to do is it's going to change this a bunch of times and record the result of that change as it relates to total. So we hit OK. And there we go. Look at that. So if I have a quantity of 1 with a price of 5, I have $5. Or 25, 50, 75, 100. And you can see that our values up here, 20 and 100, 
20 and 100. That's where they appear. You can format this if you want. So we could go ahead and put some dollar signs down here. However you want to do it. The one thing to note, you cannot, this is a special set of data, it's a data table. You can't just delete one. So if I go to delete this, can't change part of a data table. So what you could do if you want to delete everything or what you have to do is select all the cells at once and then delete it. If you want it back, just select the data, data tab, what if analysis, that, that table, column, quantity, OK. Now that's the basic one. That's the one variable one. I'm going to show you two variations of this right now because you're going to see people using them in different ways. I prefer to use it just how I showed you for one variable, but coworkers don't always agree. So let's say we want to keep it just like this. Okay, okay. Now original, okay. Total. So the thing is, this cell right here for total, for total, does not actually have to link to this cell. It just has to be a formula. So you could actually just copy this formula and put it right in here, then select the data, what if, data table, column input cell, quantity, OK. It works. Everything's good. Everyone's happy, right? Well, the problem is when you want to change this later on, you've now got to change, let's say you want to change this formula, you now have to change it here and here. And you're never going to remember that. Or someone else that gets a workbook isn't going to remember that. So this, bad way to do it. This, good way, because you link to this cell. So if you want to change this formula in the future, you just change it in one place. Now, let's do one other variation. You won't see it too often, but you might see it. And that is that we don't have to do it up and down. We can do it left and right across the columns in a row. So basically, all we're going to do is to transpose this. So you could do quantity, total, OK, bold. Original goes up here, remove the bold, total, we want it to equal this cell, OK. And for quantity, I'm going to quickly transpose this, Control C, go over here, Alt E S E, enter, awesome little shortcut. Now select the data, data tab, what if data table. This time it is a row input instead of column input because we're going across a row, across the rows instead of up and down in a column. So row input quantity. OK. And there we go. Nice, neat, and as expected. You're not going to see it too often this way, left to right, but I just want to show you that you can do it that way. So the only thing that's really easy to forget here, really, is the setup of these guys right here and the fact that this needs to be a formula. Now let's go to the two variable setup, which is pretty similar, just a tiny bit different. And that allows us to change the price and the quantity to see its effect on the total amount. All right, down here, two variable. OK. So there are many different ways to set up the titles, by the way. As you may have noticed, titles right here. These ones are pretty logical. But for the two variable one, it can be a little bit confusing. You can, you might want to set up your, you'll see in a moment. I'll just show you, actually. Quantity right here. Then let's go over and up. This will be a formula. So I'll just type it in there as a placeholder. Then over and up. Price. Now, it's sometimes helpful to merge and center and change the alignment. So quantity will go up and down like this. Um, and you can merge and center price if you want. Doesn't really matter, but you'll see in a moment how that can be kind of confusing. Because quantity here, we're not going to put below it. So it's the same as before. Quantity is going to go up and down here. So 1, 5, 10, 15, 20. Price. Now, this is what price do we want to test? So what we can do here, let's just put whatever you want. Say 2, 3, 
Let's just go up by one. Okay, so eight bucks. So now it's going to test the price from two to eight dollars and the quantity one to 20. And our formula, so I just put this here as a placeholder to more easily set up the data. The formula is exactly what we have here. So with the 100. So all we want to do is to equal sign, go up here, enter. So this right here is the result that we want to see based off changing these, or the formula. We want to see the result of this formula when we change these inputs. Maybe that sounds a little confusing, so let's just do it. Just like before, we want to make sure to select the formula along with the inputs. So the inputs down here. And the only reason that before we selected original as well, so original was selected, is because that was just a placeholder value. We didn't really want to put anything there. Here, we don't need a placeholder value because of how the data is set up. So you select the inputs along with the formula, and we go to data, what if analysis, data table, okay. This time, we have a row input and a column input. So the row input, we want to change price, and the column input, we want to change quantity. All right, hit OK, and bam. So if I have one book at $2, my total will be $2. One book at five is five. 15 books at five is 75. We can go ahead and change the formatting, make it however you want. And now you have a two-way data table. So the easiest thing to forget, the hardest thing to remember here is just how you set up the data, okay? So with the one variable, just remember, headers. What you wanna change right here, what you wanna see once you change that input right here. So this is what's going to be changed. This will be the result of the change. First cell here, always a formula, which should just link to the data set. Now when you go for the two-way one, just think about it diagonally, okay? This is the data in the left column. This is your formula. This is the data in the top row. Just bam, bam, bam. Do those three first, then input your values like this, and like this, and I find at least that makes it a little bit easier to remember how to do this. Now that's it for the basic one and two variable data table sensitivity analysis. It's great, I love it. But before I go, I wanna show you one really cool thing, which is that we can do it with multiple values. So here we just did it with the total, but let's say that we wanted to see the impact of changing the quantity on different formulas, multiple formulas. So let's go to the multiple values tab now. And here we have something just a little bit more complex, not too much. It's like a loan or a mortgage calculator. You're going to see this in most of the results online. So this is the loan amount. This is how long it is for. Here it's in years, doesn't actually matter. The rate. And here, this is what matters. We have three results calculated based off of these inputs up here. So before we only had one result that was calculated, the total one result, that's all. Here we have three results based off of these inputs. And we can check all three of them when we change one of the inputs. So I'll do the test one real quick. Let's say we wanna see the rate, or change the rate and see how that affects the payment. Remember this is our original. And over here, we just link to the result we would like to see, which is this formula. I wanna see how that changes. And then over here, we just input, let's say 2 and 2.5. So I want to change the rate from 2 to 6%. Select the data, dat tab, what if, dat table, column input cell. So what are we going to change? Well, I'm going to change the rate. Okay. And there we go, and you can see the 5% rate, 536.82, the same 536.82.
So now let's do it with multiple results. It's almost exactly the same. It's really cool. I don't know why more people don't use this part of this feature. I want to see the payment, but now let's go and check out the total paid and the interest paid. So it's almost the same. We just add two more columns. Do original. Following the same pattern, we link this payment to payment. Total paid, total paid, interest paid, interest paid. Now I'm just going to copy these dudes. So I'm going to test it for the same interest rates. And we're almost done. All you do is select the data. So select the formulas up here and the values that will be changed over here. What if data table, column input, the same. All we are changing is rate. OK. And there you go. How cool is that? And here we have the numbers 193, 255, 78. Same as here. Same as here. All is good. So now you can see that it's, it's pretty darn cool. We've got a bunch of different stuff here. And if you want, you can go ahead and change some stuff up here. So change the loan amount to. And you're going to see all the values changing down here. And I got to say, I love this feature. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. You can quickly sift through the values, especially with the two-way one down here. It's very, very helpful, especially here. These were all were linear examples where the data changes by a predictable amount. But that's not always the case, especially when you have massive calculations. It can be very helpful. Now, one caveat is that it can also slow down your spreadsheet, because you may have noticed. Let me zoom out a little bit. When you do anything in the spreadsheet, go down here, hit Enter, everything updates. You can see all of the data tables updating. And that can slow things down. So if it does, go to the Formulas tab, Calculation Options, and check Automatic Except for Data Tables. So what that means is when I go here, hit Enter, the data tables do not automatically update or change. If you want to get that feature back, just go here, Formulas tab, Calculation Options, Automatic. Now you'll see everything changes when I input anything in the cell. So if you turn it off, just remember to turn it back on when you need it. And that pretty much does it for this tutorial. So memorize the format of single and double variable data tables, and you'll be able to do this as quickly as anything in Excel. It's a great little feature. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.